Oh, they picked it. Cool. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Atheist Experience. We're live today, Sunday, May 17th, 2009. I'm Matt Dillon, and with me is Jeff D. And this program is a live television program sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. And we'll get a little into the, the announcement stuff in the meantime, but how the hell are you? I'm good. Good. Thank you for asking. Yourself? I'm, I'm doing well. Yeah. Nobody is, I haven't had lightning strike me. Um, I haven't come down with serious maladies. Nobody's punched me in the face for Jesus, despite promises. But I don't want you to. So I mean, don't, you're not going to improve yourself. It's just uh, thanks for the amusing clips, though, because that uh, more and more people find us through YouTube now, and and a lot of it is the punch you in the face for Jesus thing, mm -hmm. along with why don't we die when the sun goes down? Uh, what, you know, <sighs> it's amazing. As I mentioned, we are live. Today is May 17, 2009. We're sponsored by the ACA. The ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday at Romeo's on Barton, Sp <laughs> Barton Springs <laughs> Road, beginning at 11, around 11.30, except for the first Sunday of the month when we host a lecture series at the Austin History Center located at the corner of 9th and Guadalupe. That begins around 12.15. Uh, the June lecture is actually going to be Chris Comer, so if you're in the, uh, the Austin area and you're able to actually come down for that, uh, please do. A lot of you know she's... Uh, one of the people who worked for the TEA was, who was fired for forwarding an email informing educators about uh, a, a discussion, a, a lecture, I guess, uh, on the intelligent design movement. Um, in addition to this program, by the way, the audio of this is available online. The video is available uh, to watch live streaming. Uh, it, right now it's at ustream.tv, which will be up there by the time I'm done waving my pen, because it's a magic pen. You didn't know that, but it is. And you can download the, the video as well and watch it at uh, the older clips are available at Google. And now we're starting to um, put the newer uh, uh, episodes up on Blip. Uh, you can go to atheist-experience.com for more information about the show. There's an archive link on the left side. You can do that, and it will pull up shows from this year. But you can also expand the table to cover previous years and all of the shows. Follow the links to the video, and you'll be able to watch the old shows. In addition to this program, the ACA also sponsors a bi-weekly internet audio podcast called The Nonprofits. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. Uh, you can go to nonprofitsradio.com for more information. We were supposed to be live yesterday, but uh, due to a thunderstorm that knocked out some power and internet access, uh, was intermittent, uh, and the host, well, not the host, one of the guys on the show, namely me, was extraordinarily lazy and decided it would be best if we just didn't do the show. So uh, we may do two shows in a row starting next week. I'm not sure. As a reminder, the, they're going to be doing upgrades and improvements to the public access studio where we film the show over the months of June, July, and at least part of August is the plan. Uh, that means, of course, that if you're watching in the Austin area on public access, which would be Channel 16 on Time Warner and Grande Communications, um, you won't see live showings of the Atheist Experience. Uh, that's not going to stop us from doing it, so for the next couple months, uh, the show will have a different look and probably not be done, may not be done at the same time uh, or broadcast in the same way. We're still discussing exactly how we're going to do it. We're going to try to continue doing a streamed version of the show, record it, and get it posted. So if you're in the Austin area, you're going to see what it's like for the rest of the world. Uh, not having this wonderful, you know, direct access cable program immediate with only a four second delay. You can watch it streaming over the internet like everybody else or after the fact. We'll try to get shows up as quickly as we can. We uh, also won't have any public access TV during no, no, no. Is that right? Public access TV will continue. There will be recorded, recorded programs. There won't be recorded many. shows in the fight? Yes. Awesome. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll be doing whatever we can to take care of everybody. For more information about the nonprofits, you can go to nonprofitsradio.com and find out how to connect to listen to the program live every other Saturday from 2 to 3.30, approximately. And, and by approximately, I mean 2 to 3.30 approximately and every other Saturday approximately because, <laughs> uh, well, you know, real life gets in the way sometimes. Um, in addition to those uh, efforts, we also, in the lecture series, we also have a number of uh, social outreach programs going on at different times. There's Atheist Happy Hour every Thursday at the Dog and Duck Pub beginning at around 7 o'clock. That's at 17th and Guadalupe. And after this program's over, most of the people involved get together and go to dinner. Uh, currently, we're going to Threadgills. We, the show's on the air until 6 o'clock. We'll be down there around 6.30. Um, that's at 301 West Riverside, I think, or is it East Riverside? I can't tell because I can't see the thing. But 301 West. Thank you. 
So we'll be down there. Any, you don't have to be a member to come to anything we do, uh, or almost anything we do. As long as you're not coming down to preach, proselytize, provoke, punch, or piss me off, um, you're welcome to come down. You've had it a fourth P. I have. <laughs> it's been a frustratingly wonderful week full of email, which I probably won't get to because uh, Jeff's got some stuff to, to go through, and, and I want to make sure that he gets to do all that. And you guys really probably would not be that interested in some of the emails that I received this week. It's shocking. We get lots. A lot of shocking stuff today. Yeah. So, uh, if you'd like to find out more about the Atheist Community of Austin or the programs, you can visit the various websites. And if you don't get through on the telephone today or if you don't want to, you can email tv at atheist-community.org. That goes to myself. Uh, Jeff gets that. A lot of the other co-hosts and people behind the scenes. And you can also visit the Frequently Asked Questions page at the Atheist Experience and Atheist Community of Austin websites. I'm not getting it. You're not getting it? No. All right. That explains why I have to answer so much. Well, today is the day where you can pick up your slack because now I turn I, my slack I turn everything awesome. over to you. What did you bring in to talk about? Uh, well, um, uh, I don't even know how to begin. I can't believe that something this horrific has um, has come out. But um, GQ magazine has turned up this story in the days surrounding. <laughs> I'm not on a mic. Well then, now you can hear me. And that's Good it, every week we do something like that on purpose, just so you'll think it's live. And really, it's not, and it's we always me because I'm so out of practice. Really, we re we pre-record this and just you know. Mm -hmm. So I was about to say some horrific things. Uh, this means I didn't hear much of anything. GQ magazine of all places uh, has exposed this story. In the days surrounding the U.S. invasion of Iraq, cover sheets like the ones I'm about to show you began adorning top-secret intelligence briefings produced by Donald Rumsfeld's Pentagon. These cover sheets juxtapose war images with inspirational Bible quotes and were delivered by Rumsfeld himself to the White House where they were read by the man who, just after September 11, referred to America's war on terror as a crusade. You guys ready to do some close-ups? Uh, this is in order. This is an actual cover sheet from a uh, Defense Department briefing. It's got pictures of praying soldiers and the Bible quote, Whom shall I send and who will go with us? Here I am, Lord, send me, from Isaiah 6.8. Six, eight. Six, eight. This is our national government, right? These are the guys supposed to, repre uh, uh, supposed to represent all of us, no matter what re religious persuasion, and, uh, and supposedly not conducting a holy war. Uh, here's one. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, e even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold, hold me fast, O oh Lord. And it's a psalm something. Matt might know that. No. Can you imagine Donald's, Donald Rumsfeld putting these things together or ordering his staff? Put together something George would really like. Uh... More war images, right? That's soldiers uh, marching and tanks and things. And Their arrows are sharp. All their bows are strung. Their horses' hooves seem like flint. Their chariot wheels are like a whirlwind. That's um, More Isaiah. Another, another Isaiah. Yeah, Isaiah is a good one. I have point. a lot of these. So these prepared to be completely freaked out. Uh, as this went on for, for months, at least the, the ones that are on the GQ website go on for at least three months. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, stay your course, so to speak, uh, and after you have done everything to stand from Ephesians. Uh, here's the one that creeps me out the most. We all believed that the Bush administration thought this way, but here is pretty clear freaking evidence. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. 
Doesn't matter whether he's actually, whether they've got, actually got weapons of mass destruction over there. You know, before the show, You actually, just have to say you think they do and commit it to the Lord and you'll be successful. Before the show, uh, Steve asked if that was a fortune cookie, and we kind of laughed. And it, actually, it is, because that's from Proverbs, which is just a book full of fortune cookies. It's Jewish fortune cookies. Here we go. Have I not commanded you, be strong and create courageous, do not be terrified, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go, even if you go into a country that was no threat to us whatsoever. There's a bush must have especially liked this one. It's a picture of Saddam. It is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Seems to me, in retrospect, the uh, foolish men whose talk has been silenced uh, are the uh, members of the Bush administration. Uh, open the gates that the righteous nation may enter, the nation that keeps faith. Another Isaiah, and there's a big old archway made of swords. I guess that's in Tehran somewhere. Yeah. If we're Christian enough, then we get to win. Um, oh, this is long. I'm not quoting this whole thing. Daniel something or other about some disembodied human fingers floating around. Is that what that is? Yeah. Disembodied human fingers floating around and actually more military photos. Th th this one might be more significant than you think and worth actually well, reading. It's not that I don't think it's significant. It's that it's so long I don't want to mess with it. You look at that. I'll just move on. Oh, God, they get... This one's long also. Uh, let's see. The king is not saved by a might, might army. There's a typo in it. A warrior is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a false hope for victory. Uh, nor does it deliver anyone by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope for his loving kindness to deliver their soul from death. So... You don't need to send enough troops to get the job done, even a job you shouldn't have been doing in the first place, because all you got to do is be Christian. That's all you got to do. This is in the White House during the Iraq War. Yes? Uh, How about, you have a response to that? No, I just... Yeah. The, the interesting thing about there being a typo there yeah. means that... Uh, First of all, they're not technologically savvy enough to know how to cut and paste. But it means that somebody actually sat there and typed, typed it, in. it in from a Bible or a Bible website or whatever else. Yeah. So it's not like somebody just said, oh, I you know, grabbed some quotes and stuck them in there. There's a nice short and sweet one. Uh, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Because, you know, that has something to do with us winning the war in Iraq that we shouldn't have been in. Okay. You got a response to that one, or no? Well, see, Daniel's that's a book that the last. Daniel's a book that most Christians uh, identify as as a book of prophecy. Uh huh. Um, right down to supposed prophecies about you know Messiah and everything else. This particular one is where the supposed hand of God comes in and writes on the wall. And that's supposed saying, to be God's disembodied fingers. Yeah. Uh, that you know your days are numbered, your kingdom's divided, and I'm going to take you out. And and by using a verse like that, they're basically saying that, you know, we are in the position of the good king yeah. uh, who's, who has the authority of God to come in and take over this divided land. So in case there was any doubt whatsoever, it wasn't just a few weird generals that said crazy religious things about the war in Iraq. Yeah. It just wasn't. It wasn't. It was the, uh, well, it was Rumsfeld and Bush, at least, uh, on top of that. The only thing that I'm happy about with this is that those weren't sent out to troops. That, you, that, that the average troop wasn't necessarily, they may, they may have been getting similar messages from other people. Mm -hmm. uh, but this, this you know, it's, it's bad, but it could have been worse, I guess. I'm, I'm I, guess quite I, I, I suppose that's true. But... You know, this is the kind of stuff that it, it, we atheists make a big freaking deal all the time about separation of church and state. It's perfectly okay for George Bush to believe whatever he wants when, after, you know, when he's in, in office doing his job. It's fine, but to to 
hinge like the 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 success of our nation in a war to hinge the reason for the war on the biblical justifications that's 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 over a crazy line to me though this is this is a way you know without without crafting as a conspiracy the joint chiefs are not going to let them hinge the success of our military venture on prayer uh, well they, they they understand uh you know what it takes to, to win. This is more about motivating somebody to action in the first place. Yeah, there's pink over there. It's gone now. But yeah, this this to me strikes me as the, uh, you know, we're going to give our president his, uh, you know, daily intelligence briefings, and we're going to include these not so <laughs> subliminal messages and not about God like directing people to war. Yeah, it, it just, I mean, it, what we need when we have a leader, whatever it is that they believe, we need them to make clear, rational decisions. That's what we need. And um, so it's not, it, 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 it's not that, um, that the separation, separation of church and state means that only a non-believer should be president. No. No matter how great that would be. Uh, it means that when you are uh, in charge of our nation, you need to be level-headed and not deciding what to do uh, and allowing your decisions to be influenced by, you know, weird ancient prophecies and stuff. That's just not cool. Not safe. Not sane. That's it. You thought I had a big, long thing. I don't have any more to say than that. I think those speak for themselves. I can't possibly comment on a comment like that. <laughs> uh, oh, there's, there's something about this, though, that... I mean, you know, when I was talking about how you, you put verses like that on there in order to, to motivate, motivate and spend, send a specific uh, message. So yep. you're, you're talking to... You're basically... Uh, it's a, a method of propaganda, and you're, you know your target audience. You but this wasn't person. propaganda. This is internal. No, no, no. it's secret. propaganda. It's propaganda to Bush. It is, <laughs> it is, they're trying to convince Bush to take right. some kind of action. It's just knowing okay. your target audience. It's, work. it's no different from what anybody would do. The thing is, though, in those cases where, let's say, all that stuff had been removed, all of the uh -huh. religious stuff had been removed, yeah. and, and I'm just hypothesizing here about a president... Um, who's going to make decisions like that, who is a sincere believer, uh -huh. and even though nobody has actually pushed these particular verses on him, yeah. he's sitting around struggling with what decision should I make with regard to the war, yeah. and he decides to crack this book open, and he comes across a passage, one of any of those passages, and well, says, any, any oh, passage. God has you know, given me the answer yeah, it's you know rather than me having to take any responsibility for the decision, God. Asking to open the Bible at random and and looking at a verse for inspiration is no different than consulting the magic eight ball. Well, except that there's more possible except that, answers. Except yeah, there's more possible answers, including you know the magic eight ball does not say, you know, go kill them all. Here, the cowering per prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. Hey. <laughs> Therefore, things cool. That's Isaiah 51, Everything's 14. cool. So that important rescue we had planned. No, no hurry. Yeah. We don't, to, we don't need to hook anybody up. All right, well, we'll go ahead and... Uh, just completely freaking irrelevant and shouldn't, should not enter into the decision-making at all on any level. Yeah. Okay. We'll go ahead and uh, take some calls. We've got Tony in Tulsa. Uh, yes, sir. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm a long time uh, listener, first time caller. I actually came across something this uh, last week in my speech class. I'm going to college up here in Tulsa. Actually, from Austin. I highly like to get back there to you guys. But um, I came across, came across a controversy because we were supposed to give a persuasive speech. Mm -hmm. It had to be over something controversial. And we had people talking about the death right and, you know, gun control. And I decided to talk about atheism. And everybody just, you know, you could see the fear in their eyes. Like, you just don't touch that subject. And I said, why? It's absolutely most controversial thing out there, just nobody wants to talk about it. And so, come to find out, everybody in my class was actually pretty good and was interested to hear about it, but unfortunately, my teacher was an all-out Christian because she even told me the reason why she probably have a problem with this is because our nation was founded as a Christian nation, 
which I was about to interject with her, but she holds on to my grade, and I was like, okay, I'll just wait for my speech to kind of persuade her, or hopefully at least try to get good grades out of it. And I did a pretty good speech, I'd like to think. I even took a survey of the class of who lived their life by the Ten Commandments, and only 10% of the class was able to respond with me that they actually knew all 10 of them and could write them down. The other 90% unfortunately could not write the Ten Commandments, but the whole point of that was is that I just wanted to prove to everybody that you don't have to live your life by the Bible to consider yourself to be a moral person. Because, you know, as we all know, the first four commandments are basically all self-promoting, you know, God's basically jealous and don't believe anybody before him, keep the Sabbath day holy, and all that. And uh, I just tried to prove to the class that, you know, it was a, a legitimate thing that you can still be a free thinker and yet be a moral person. And I showed a statistic on how many atheists compared to religious people are in prison compared to all over American population. And my teacher, she actually said that I didn't point out different religious beliefs on that survey, so she had to take off points for it when I actually did point out different religious beliefs in my class, remembered it, remembered quotes that I said, and she just took off all these points for it. And to me, hey, I hey, felt like hey, that was... Hey, 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 hey. First of all, why should you have to point out the different religious beliefs? This isn't atheism versus Christianity or atheism versus Muslim. It's a statistic. Out of those people who believe in God versus those who don't, how many are in prison? That's the only relevant. You shouldn't have to break that down at all. Well, I was just trying to just simply show the percentage of how many atheists there were in prison compared to how many Catholics and Protestants and right. Right. Muslims. And, uh, and I actually pointed out those few names, and I noticed that Christians were actually a point zero one percent in the prison population. And uh, she just said that I didn't even highlight those, and so she took off points for it. Basically, I thought that she was just trying to nitpick anything she could to try to get at me because she didn't agree with my particular conversation or my topic. But so how much, how much that, damage did that did that do to your grade on that? Well, she had like this sheet that she gave me, you know, like what she covered and what she didn't cover. Everything was circled good that I covered. And yeah. she just wrote down there on the bottom a little comment like, you forgot to highlight this particular area, which me and the class actually do remember that I highlighted. Uh -huh. And she gave me like about an 87% when the person that went after me was nervous, no eye contact, nothing, and he got a 97% on his overall speech. Uh -huh. uh, what was to his me, topic, kind of, by the way? Just of curiosity, I'm sorry? what was his topic? Do you remember? His topic was over net neutrality, which was, oh, you yeah, know. because uh, that's controversial. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like I was just looking at the time, like, man, when is this going to pass? One person actually talked about the death penalty and why we should have it, and I was actually, me and the only atheist in class said that I was against the death penalty, and when I posed the guy a question after he was done with the speech, I said, so how many people have ever been, you know, on death row that, information came up afterwards that they were able to be, you know, uh, let off the death penalty because they were proven to be innocent after all. And he's like, oh, there's a small percentage. I said, okay, how many people have been put to death that information has come up where they actually were proven to be innocent? He goes, oh, that's never happened. Everybody been put to death actually been proven that they deserve to die. And I was like, and all you guys were even the Ten Commandments, which is the sixth one, which thou shalt not kill. I just sounded just completely, um, you know, hypocritic. And people, you know, interpret the rules the way they want to. And I thought it was just funny how I'm the only atheist, and I was the one that guy that was against, like, the death penalty. Because we know by putting somebody to death, you know, that absolves everything that that person ever did wrong in their lifetime. Um, mm -hmm. So I just ran into firsthand with uh, basically trying to be a separation of church and state. And I felt like I was a forerunner because apparently after me, two other people now have actually signed up as atheism for their particular speech for their next class. So... And nobody had ever done it before. Wow, uh, cool. I, uh, I was trying to think of a question. You know, I can't really think of anything. I just, uh, you know, you called me, you know, one of those big, huge fans, and yes, I am, and I uh, really just wanted to call in and listen and uh, talk to you guys. Jeff, I love your attitude. and that. You're so knowledgeable. It's just, uh, it's just great to actually get a chance to talk to you guys. I want to meet you in person when I get back to Austin. Well, come on down, and you can send me your speech, and I'll see if I would have given you a better grade, but don't count on it, because I'm actually pretty rough on people when it comes to grades. I don't th Well, I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the honesty of it, and that's one reason why, uh, you know, I, there's always this old saying, don't ever meet your idols, because they're probably going to shoot you down or not be the person you expect them to be. Uh, with you, on the other hand, it, at least 
give me something to open my eyes and give me to look at something in a better direction because it's all about knowledge. I'm just trying to better myself, you know. And uh, this whole thing with religion, and just, it's just so scary how it's just turning our world upside down in this country. It's, yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for calling, Tony. Appreciate it. Let us know when you get to Austin. Sorry to hear your troubles, right. man. Hang in there. I didn't do that. I didn't hit the button. Who's next? I don't know, but I didn't get a dial tone on two, so there may actually be something wrong with this. We've got, is it Jay in Fort Pickett? Hello? 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 Jay? Hey, hey you're on the air. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm out here in Fort Pickett, Virginia. Uh, I'm doing a... Uh, uh, Army training slash uh, school training, and um, the thing that sucks about this is uh, we have no internet anywhere around here. So uh, I was actually taking it upon myself to be selfish and uh, call in and take up one of your lines so I can listen in on the show. And uh, since I've been here, I met this guy. He's uh, he, he's an evangelical uh, Christian, and uh, he told me about proof that he has that his particular God exists. And I was yeah. trying to gold him into uh, calling today. Yeah. And, uh, well, looks like he's uh, missing in action at the moment, but um, as soon as as soon as soon he resurfaces, uh, I will make sure to give him the phone number so he can give you guys a call. That'd be great. But, uh, I mean, if, if you guys don't mind, I'd, I'd like to stay on hold to listen to the rest of the show. Actually, that'd be completely unfair, Jay. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I completely understand, and um, I can always go back and just listen to the show online. Yeah, if, if it weren't possible to listen to it uh, online after the fact, I'd, I might be tempted. But when the phone lines are completely full and we're getting calls from all over the world, it would be unfair uh, just to let somebody hang out and listen on hold. Although, right. oddly enough, we have people do that on accident all the time. But, <laughs> or, or for, I yeah. guess, accident's not the right word. So, you, okay. are you? Are, have you ever been in a foxhole, Jay? Uh, well, uh, that depends on how you define foxhole. Uh, because, uh, uh, not bullets, but I would say, I would say mortars and RPGs. Yes, but and, not. And, and you're an atheist. Yes, I am an atheist in a foxhole, man. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> For that alone, I'd almost let you stay on hold, but it'd still be unfair. <laughs> but I, I do appreciate your service, and there are others here who do as well. When I was actually in, I was not an atheist. Uh, Jen was, and Jen's here. But so thanks a lot right. for calling, Jay. And uh, okay, you know, definitely. Can I, can I say one more thing? Yeah. Uh, when when you when you get the phone call from this guy, his name is Bart. Uh, right. When you get the phone call, uh, just forgive him, Father Matt, for he know not what he does. That's uh, all I'm saying. I say. I don't I don't <laughs> presume anything. If you know if he has can have a good conversation and present his uh, his points, then great. Uh, evidently, some, well, anyway, we'll see. Thanks, Jay. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, man. And from Denmark, is it Kaya or Kia? Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. Uh, it's Kia. Uh, Kia. And I'm a guy. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> All right. And um, I, I just... Um, First, I wanted to say that uh, I'm really glad that you make the show. I really enjoy it, and I'm a great fan of it. And I've been an atheist since the age of reason. <laughs> so um, I've been an atheist Thomas since I was two years old. Oh. And um, the, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, I, I have this friend, and he's really cool and stuff. And he's a Muslim. And um, we, we talked a lot, a lot about, like, um, Islam and stuff, mm -hmm. and one of the things he said was, uh, for example, that the Quran was um, unaltered. And then I thought, what's your take on that? I mean, does it mean anything? Uh, is it true? Uh, as far as I know, it's true, and it doesn't mean a thing. Oh. So it's war and peace. <laughs> okay. Then another thing was, he, he doesn't believe in evolution. So um, wh why... How how do I prove to him that evolution is true, like, really, really well? 
uh, best advice that that I could give you is give him the uh, URL for what is it talk talk origins dot org talk origins oh, talk origin, right. okay. dot org any question he's got he can go there and find the scientific response okay and you know but a person who's really deeply committed to not wanting to believe a particular thing is not well, well, he's not swayed by a good argument I love that okay so right um, was that it? Um, I think it was yeah so I, I just wanted to ask like a trivial question for the fans Sure. Uh, Matt, wh why did you shave your head? I mean, in the start, you, you had this uh, moon, right? And then later, you shaved your head. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really pretty simple. Um, I started doing the show more often, and the lights are from the top, so even when I had hair, my hair has always been thin and fine. And so it looked like I was more bald than I was, and I figured as long as I was going to look more bald than I was, I might as well be bald. Oh. Well, I, I think it looks cooler. Well, I mean, now, what, what is it with shaving your hair and uh, getting gold teas on that show? I mean, you have like four hosts. Yeah. I don't know. Jeff I is the nonconformist. I'm, I'm expecting uh, Jeff to. Uh, no, 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 Jeff no, 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 never no, 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 yeah, I, I don't think uh, I don't think Jeff will do that. I think Jen would shave her head before Jeff does his. I think, and I don't think Jen's too enthused. She's shaking her head. No, nope, it's not happening. And, and I'm not growing my hair back, no matter who wants me to, because you know, I don't have. What does you want control you to? Uh, I'm you not sure that you. that will, would matter, <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, there there may not be anything there to actually grow back. But, um, we've got is it Ken in San Bernardino? Hey, Ken. Is this Ken? What's up? Well, uh, I just wanted to um, uh, say as far as uh, I define proof as something uh, I give an argument, and if you can't refute it logically and scientifically, then you have to accept that. Is that okay or no? No. Why? Because... Just because you can present something that can't be disproven doesn't mean it's true. You've actually got it ass backwards. In, in order for something to be believable, in order for a claim to be, if, in order for it to be justifiable to believe in a claim, there has to be evidence that, to support it. Yeah, uh, it, without evidence, it, it's entirely possible. Logic. It's entirely possible to make to form a, a an internally consistent logical argument without it being true. Right. All you got to do is feed false assumptions into it. Right. False yeah. premises. Well, if it's so, well, I can say you know everyone from Italy is green, and Fred is from Italy. Therefore, Fred is green. There's nothing wrong with my logic. What's wrong is that, in fact, everybody from Italy is not green. It's a factual problem. Oh, well, okay. Uh, well, if it's consi consistent with reason and Science, that's what I'm saying. Did you hear? I said that. I said if it's consistent with logic and science, you can't refute it scientifically or logically, then you have to accept, accept it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay. Have to is pretty strong, but um, well, let me just throw I'm, it out. Willing, I'm willing to move forward, you know, tentatively okay. on that basis. Matt? The, the way, okay, okay, okay. No, the way logical arguments work is that. You present your premises and draw a conclusion from them. And if the argument is in valid structure, is a valid structure, then the conclusion must be sound if the premises are sound. Now we can okay. question premises all day long. Is that is that all? I mean, because if, if you're saying okay, I'm going to present something, and as long as you can't disprove it, you have to admit that it must be no, 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 nonsense. Oh no, well, no, I never said that. I, I'm sorry that you if you thought that. Okay, uh, let's move on. Then. Can I move on? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hold last week. Uh, okay. When you trace all the way back to the expansion of the universe, you're done. You get what they call what? When you trace Hello? all the way back to the expansion of the universe, you're done. You can't go any further back. Whoa, whoa, whoa. am I done? You're not right. hanging. No, no, let it. No, I'm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm finishing your sentence for you. That's all. Oh, I'm sorry. I was gonna. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. My bad. You go get ahead. what you call a singularity that comes to a boundary to space and time itself. 
So what we have is really five options here we can conclude. We can cl conclude that there was a natural cause, which we only have three options that are known. The multiverse, the big bounce, and the quantum uh, fluctuation, the, the vacuum. But these options have been discarded by non-theistic scientists for a variety of reasons. They contradict science and it's just simple logic. So, uh, you know... Uh, excuse me. Uh-huh? As far as I'm aware... Not all of those things have been rejected by the scientific community as a whole. Are you simply saying well, you can not. find uh, scientists? Whole. Excuse me. No, no, no. Not, well, not I, I don't mean as no. a whole, like all of them. I mean the vast yeah. majority of them. There's a consensus. No. Well, most of those them, things most are, of not, them. are not. There's no. They're, they're not all rejected by a scientific uh, a consensus among the scientists and in the scientific community. That's not true. They're certainly most not. Of they're them. certainly not rejected. <laughs> most of them. They're certainly Which ones not. Aren't? They're certainly not rejected in your oversimplification that they defy simple logic. And by the okay, way, okay. In, by okay. the way, even if there were no explanations, even if all of these have been disregarded, so what? Well, I was going to go getting on rid of that. Getting rid of possible answers does not make some other answer true. You cannot no, go I, through. You, you cannot go it. through. Shut up for a second, please. You cannot go through and say, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work. And in any way ever, for the rest of time, if you did this, get to, therefore, this must be true. Until you have identified that you have actually enumerated all possibilities. I know that. You're getting ahead of me. I, I'm so far ahead of you. I heard this shit last week when you called. Go ahead. Yeah, but this is not... Okay, okay. So, wait a minute. I'm, you have just conceded, Ken, that uh, only most of these things that you listed have been rejected by scientists. I'm not even sure that's true, but suppose it is. Which I'm ones figuring. haven't? Because as, soon, as long as there are still some in play, the argument you're trying to make still won't work. I'm saying that as far as... Because they're inconsistent with science and reason, guys. Uh, they if they were inconsistent with science and reason, don't you think the, the, there would be a consensus among scientists that they needed to be rejected? There no, is, it's not, it's not a democracy. It doesn't that matter. Is. Huh? It's not a democracy. It doesn't matter whether or not they... Uh, <laughs> so you are saying... Uh, can I... At this point, I'm sorry, I, 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 I know there's a danger here of getting into an argument from authority, but could you please tell me your credentials as a scientific cosmologist? Well, I don't Because you're asking us to take your word over the consensus uh, of actual working scientists. No. Do you want me to get into the... the the irrationality of these options. No, I want you to. I want you to tell us what your credentials are. Well, if I you are saying that we're supposed to agree with you instead of with the no, vast majority, I've never of said that. Actually, I'll disagree. I'd rather hear you tell me why <laughs> these are irrational because I, I don't think the call, for a second <laughs> you understand these at all, or that you can demonstrate why they're irrational. I don't care what your credentials are. If you're right, you're right. Go ahead. <sighs> okay. Okay, I'll get into that after I go. Well, you'll get into that when you call back next week. You don't get to dictate when you're going to get to something. You called in last week with this first cause crap, and you call in this week with another version of the same thing. Put your thoughts together. Don't begin with statements that say, I'm going to talk about something, and as long as you can't refute it, it's therefore true. And don't make broad-based generalizations saying, here are some possible, possible explanations for the universe. But... They vi they're irrational and they violate simple reason and the scientists have rejected them. Uh, it's nonsense. And he agreed that it was not. He had, yeah. you know, admitted when challenged that that was in fact not true. So his argument doesn't start you know, even out of the gate. It's he wanted us to accept that, that assumption, which he himself knew was not true. Which is why what? I tried to head you off at the pass in the first place when you said that when you get back essentially to the event horizon and I interjected, you're done, that's because you're done. Everything else is speculation. Well, is the, is the, is the multiverse hypothesis accurate? Hell, I don't know. I, I don't even know if I understand it enough to say whether or not it's possible or probable. It doesn't matter. When are there sufficient evidence 
to justify an explanation, then that will be the explanation that is justified. And until then, none of them are. And, and no matter right. how many of them you And, you and you're absolutely at, right. Even if it had been the case that all of the uh, hypotheses uh, concerning the origins of the universe that have ever been conceived of by scientists have been subsequently rejected by scientists, even if that were the case, which is what he was trying to say, even though he, when challenged, admitted he knew that that was not true, even if it were the case, that would not mean God did it. Yeah. Can't. And by the way, we don't come on the show, uh, but atheism has no tie to this particular argument at all, um, and we don't come on here to posit a particular explanation for the origins of the universe or anything else. Um, okay, you know, it's, it's kind of like saying um, that 2 plus 2 e doesn't equal 8 or 15 or 17 or 19. You can go through all the, and, and try to tell me all the things that 2 plus 2 does, does not equal to, or did I say 2 plus 3? I don't know. In any case, you can go through all of the things that it doesn't equal to, but until you identify what it does equal and why, you haven't done a thing. Telling me, telling you know, uh, 2 plus 2 does not equal 8 or 13, therefore it must equal 57. Ha-ha, because those are the only answers I can think of. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, I'm happy that people who can think of more answers are working on the problems. Yeah. We got John in Coos Bay, Oregon. Hey, Matt. Hi, uh, hi Jeff. I'm good. Um, how many times do we have to go through this stuff? Anyway, um, wow. How many times are there? Oh, I think it's infinity. But anyway, I wanted to address something that Jeff brought up at the beginning of the show, and that's just yeah. the idea that, you know, kind of the, <clears throat> frankly, the inherent dangers of electing someone that is a hardcore fundamentalist believer. Because, you know, you were earlier saying, you know, we got it's okay for them to believe whatever they want to believe, but they need to make rational decisions for us all. And I, I think the only problem with that is that I don't know how you ask someone who literally believes in the, 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 truth, the truthfulness or the reality, the metaphysical reality of the Bible, to divorce their decision-making, you know, that, that process is, from that belief. That's because they really believe question. they're making these and decisions in reality. That, that's a darn good, good question, and it's an issue for the voters. Yeah, I, I, it's frustrating because ultimately they, they're going to, they think that they're doing the best thing, but, yeah. you know, as far as I'm they're concerned, welcome obviously to think we're they're doing the best. Crazy. They're welcome to think they're doing the best thing. They're welcome to believe whatever they want, and voters are welcome to judge their ca uh, capabilities on that basis. Yeah, I, I, honestly, I think this is, I mean, this is an issue that's come up over and over again. For me, this is, um, I, idealistically speaking, it's a much simpler issue than anybody makes it out to be, and it's really simple. As an individual, you are entitled to have whatever beliefs you have. You are entitled to follow the dictates of your conscience. As an elected representative, you are expected and required to set those aside when it comes to policy decisions because you represent more people who have a wider uh, range of views than your particular view. If you're a, and everybody should be given the option to, to run for office and demonstrate that they can do this, and as soon as we find out that they can, that's when they should be removed. That's when it should be clear that we don't need to elect this individual again or impossibly impeach them if, if their decisions have actually led to harm because they re relied on their religion. I, I, don't, I don't see this as a huge deal in most cases, because quite honestly, uh, at least in the United States and at least among Christians, most of them, uh, I'm sorry, their religion actually doesn't play that big of a, de uh, of a, uh, of, of a role in the decision-making process for real issues. But wouldn't it's you say a, the last eight years, Matt, is a little bit of a reputation of that position? No. Really? I'd say that that's a specific individual. I was pretty, talking pretty about most. <laughs> I was talking about, I, it doesn't matter. I was talking about most. I, what I said was, for most Christians, this isn't. Oh, okay, initial. yeah, I'll agree with that. For yeah. that specific one, it was, which is why I don't, wouldn't yeah. have voted for it. Which is why we need to, you know, scrutinize political um, figures carefully and, uh, and either vote for them or not as, uh, as reason dictates. The, the problem, of course, is that um, if you happen to share the religious views of the majority, um, you are pretty much free to violate that uh, expected trust that I was talking about 
to your heart's content because you have the voting block to continue to get elected. And then you're only going to be, you're essentially going to be there until um, either, you know, term limits kick you out or until you do something so egregious that even your base who thinks just like you says, okay, we've had enough. That's why Rick Perry will be governor of Texas as long as he wants to. Well, that's why I'm so encouraged by the recent trends. And actually, I think that they'll, you know, that is the rise in the non believer or the people who don't identify themselves as as Christian in particular, I guess. Yeah. I, that's why I'm encouraged by that. I actually think we'll see in the next few years that that should continue to rise. I guess that's the expectation anyway. Uh, uh, did you want to talk about Dobson's latest public retreat? Uh, the give up? Yeah. No. Guys, I'm going to go. Okay. Let, open the line. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. Thanks, John. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, James I Dobson, I Focus on the Family, has now twice made like major public... Um, announcements that uh, that the religious right has failed, that they've lost, that uh, they can get no traction now, that um, that uh, it's pretty much over until they can get back into the seat of power. And uh, uh, that's some um, that's some progress. Woohoo! I don't, yeah, I honestly I don't think it's remotely true. I think it's a way to. Uh, bring in money and re-energize people. Oh, well, this, in this, this latest one, he, he prefaced his statement saying, we are not asking you for money to fund anything. We're not going to give you the numbers of people to call to complain. We're not going to do any of this stuff because there's nothing to do. But at that point, I start taking him seriously. When, they're, when fundamentalists start you know, not asking for money, they're serious. You silly, gullible individual. You. <laughs> what better way to get money than to say, look, I'm not asking you for money. <laughs> for years they've been doing it. You get the preacher. I, I'm not, this money isn't for me. It's no, for no, no, Jesus. No, 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 that's, okay. that's step the, one. And okay. then it's, I'm not asking for money. I don't want to give you a penny. You know how much money they get after they say that? Just as much as they got before when they said it was for Jesus. Okay. I have facts and figures to make, to make that I stand up, corrected. To make that up, to get that. Make you, it ah. I'm just pulling this out of my I'm brain. not corrected. I'm In fact, Matt was it. lying. I am, I'm being dishonest. However, I do think that's the case. Okay. Uh, they're not going to turn money away. No, no, I think as long as they think there's any scrap of, um, of a chance of continuing to make a career at this, they're going to keep trying to do it. Yeah. It's, it's like the coach, you know, that, that he's tried motivating him and kicking him in the butt and everything else, and, and it finally it's just, well, I don't know what to do with you guys anymore. I give up. And, of course, the, then that gets the team together and say, no, 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 we can't let great coach Dobson down. We've got to actually do this. And it will get little, it's, crap. We'll see. They're not, you know, eventually I'd like to see uh, no groups. Like, I, actually, I'd like to see there be no need for our group. Would you? Yeah. That would be sad. Uh, it, it would be, no. 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 The day when there's no need for the ACA? Can we do it just for fun, still? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough, then. Just like, you know, you know, once you're done with the focus on the family, you guys can still get together for, like, uh, progressive brunches and stuff. <laughs> All right. All right, we've got, is it Adrian in Halifax? Yeah, it certainly is. Hey, man, how are you? Good, how you doing? Hi, good, everybody. good. Um, hey, Jeff, I'm a huge fan of the show. Just wanted to say that. Um, I've been watching you for a while. Um, anyway, I have a uh, quick question about, well, I hope it's quick, about uh, morality. Um, I, uh, I've been having this argument with a particular family member who is a, uh, I guess, a died in the wolf faith head, as, as I've heard and discussed before. Um, and basically, you know, the, the, the geometry of the argument is around morality and how. Um, you know, he has the standpoint as if you don't have a God, if you don't have a, a higher authority, then there is no morality. There is no, you know, everything's relative, right? I, I'm not too sure what the proper term for that is, but, uh, and you know, I've tried to explain to him, well, you know, I have these, the, I have the same humanistic, um, morality that you have. It's just that you think it comes from God and I think it comes from genetics and, and society and so on. But, I, I still well, can't see. Sorry, go ahead. I, I may. I? Uh, my favorite answer to this is Euthyphro's dilemma. You familiar with this? No. 
Uh, write this down. E U T H Y P H R O. Look that up. Euthyphro's dilemma is uh, something from was that Plato talking about Socrates, telling a story about Socrates, uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's a story of this young man who's taking his own father to court, and he's all pumped up with self-righteousness because he's being so good. And uh, Socrates asks him, you know, how do you know you're doing the right thing? And the, the, the man says, well, I'm doing what is commanded by the gods. And Socrates asks, is what the gods command you to do right because the God, gods command it? Or is it right in and of itself and the gods are just informing you of it? Now the problem, th this has been re uh, resurrected and, and, uh, and pointed out to Christians. The problem for Christianity is they want their God to be the lawgiver. Well, if if what's right is just inherently right and the God only tells you what it is, you can you know, cut the middleman and go straight to doing what's right. If, on the other hand, it's right because the, just because the God says so, then the God tomorrow could make up a completely different rule and say this is right now, and morality becomes just as mutable as Christians claim that it would be without a god. So they're not happy mm -hmm. either way. The traditional uh, way out for apologists is this nonsense about God's nature. They say, well, it really is, it's number two. It's because God says so. But the thing is, God's nature is such that he can only command the, the behavior that he commands. He's not going to change his mind because it's inherent to him, right? Mm -hmm. And they think they've solved it then. The next question is, where did the God get his nature from? Because if the God decided what his own nature was going to be, right, if he self-created, then his moral rules are arbitrary. It's whatever he decided at that time. And if he ever decides to recreate himself or change himself, he could, right? He'd have to have that power. On the other hand, if the God did not create himself, then he's not really the author of morality. He's just the mouthpiece of morality and whatever mysterious forces uh, are the reason why his nature is the way it is, that's the source of morality. And once again, you can cut the middleman. Yeah, I, I see, I, I definitely see where you're going with that. Um, I guess the thing is, is that the, the argument posed by the person that I've been having this argument with yeah. isn't that sophisticated. The, the, he well, that's true. The that, and, and he's not going to make a sophisticated argument. His claim is you have to have a guy to make the rules or else there's no exactly. rules. Right? Exactly. And, exactly. The, and the way that the first thing you need in the argument is to show him it can't be the way he thinks it is. It just cannot be that a god is where morality comes from. It doesn't work. There, there's a slightly different variety of this that I've talked about before, which was, for example, especially among Christians and especially among fundamentalists who think there's a god and a devil, how do they know God's the good one and devil's the evil one? There's two possibilities. Either they, are, they have their own moral code and they are assessing the actions of these characters, fictional or otherwise, and determining that this is the good one and this is the evil one because this is the one that is most consistent with my moral code and this is the one that is least consistent with my moral code. If so, then they are their own moral authority. If they are saying that they have their moral code because this God gave it to them, then basically you're in a situation where you have this all-powerful being who has told you what is good so that it confirms that he's good, which is exactly the thing an evil being were going to do if he were going to confuse you. Sure. <laughs> right. Yeah, the only way, the only possible way out is to say, well, no, 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 it's got to be God because he's the more powerful one, which is the same as saying might makes right. Plus, if you add an O to God, you get good. It's just that obvious. <laughs> yeah.
Well, hopefully it's right, well, helpful, helpful to you. If, if, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. We'll see how much mileage I get. But uh, either way, I'm going to keep listening to the show. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, Adrian, if the argument... Or did you go? Yeah, I'm here. If the argument really is just as simple as there needs to be some authority um, in order to impose moral codes versus uh, the claim that everything else would just end up as anarchy and subjective morals and, and everything's relative, um, we actually do have those systems. First of all, I am the ultimate authority for, for what I consider to be moral or ethical, etc. However, uh, I have shared views that I share with other people, some people in this room, and there may be people in this room that disagree on things. Um, but we live in a collective cooperative society, and we only impose the rules that we agree on. And in the areas where there are differences, we go to like a higher set of rules, which is uh, I may think that you're a, a, a moron who's endangering yourself uh, this way, but I grant you the right to do that. And your rights and freedoms end where mine began. And so there's, there's a subtle difference between how we go about enacting laws and determining what we're going to allow in society, but that in and of itself, though, is still um, pretty much arbitrary. The, what's acceptable in this society in the United States right now is different from what was acceptable in the United States 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, um, and, and, and everywhere else. Sorry. Yeah, I've tried you. I've tried you. Obviously, in the land that yeah. was yeah. before, the, the land that time forgot. The land that I've tried to speak to you about, uh, about zeitgeist, I guess that's the term for it, you know, the, the social yes. acceptance of, of what's what's acceptable. The change um, ethos. I, I think it's sad. I think this individual, as are many people, they, instead of following a scientific method of everything where they, they form a conclusion based on the facts, I think this individual in particular takes the facts and tries to bend them to his already conclusion well, he, he's you looking know? yeah he's looking for an easy answer but yeah. you know if morality were easy we wouldn't need even a god to tell us what yeah. you know what right and wrong in fact yeah. life is complicated and you know difficult moral decisions are are tough they're complex right there's often not a perfect answer and so those people that look for the easy answer, they just want a rule they can apply in every situation so they don't have to worry about it. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's lazy. Yeah, it is. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Andrew. All right, bye. Got, is it Paul in Dublin? Yep. Hello. How are you? Hello, Jeff. How are you? Hey. Uh, basically, what I was going to talk about today is just did you ever hear of the Irish defamation bill recently? Yes, I've heard of that. Well, did you hear about the changes that are trying to be made to it? No. No. Well, on the topic of doom and gloom, since you had another topic about doom and gloom earlier on today, recently there has been, it's been put forward that the blasphemous libel bill has basically, they're trying to amend it now. Yeah. And... Basically, it's because of Act 40 of the, or sorry, Article 40 of the Irish Constitution guarantees the freedom of speech and it quali qualifies it by stating, the state shall endeavor to ensure that organs of public opinion, such as the radio, the press, the cinema, while preserving the rightful liberty of expression, including criticism of government policy, shall not be used to undermine public order or the morality of the author of the or, or the authority of the state. It then goes on to say the publication or utterance of blasphemous, sedacious, or indecent material is an offence which shall be punishable in accordance with law. And that's that's already in your constitution. That's already in the constitution. Okay. But nothing was really done with it, so there never was a law against really any of that. To be okay. Like, right. It was never spelled out what the punishment was going to be. Yeah. Right. Because basically it was, I'm not sure whether they just figured out they're trying to, you know, put a law against blasphemy was going to be, they probably just didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah. But recently they have decided to try and enforce one. And it basically 
some of the headline, well, backstory headline news of Ireland in the last few weeks. Uh, to basically a quick rundown of it now, last year um, there was there was an attempt to make an amendment to the Constitution to take out the part about blasphemy, because, you know, insulting someone's invisible friend, even though you don't believe in them, mm-hmm. it shouldn't really, you know, count as a law, and you shouldn't really be able to get prosecuted under that, but considering, you know, you're supposed to be guaranteed freedom of speech. But now, David O'Hearn, the, one of the Irish um, Taoiseachs, or one of the, sorry, let me see, Dermot O'Hearn, the Minister for Justice, Dermot O'Hearn, proposes to insert a new section into the defamation bill, stating, a person who publishes or utters blasphemous matter shall be guilty of an offence and shall be liable upon conviction on indictment to a fine not exceeding 100,000 euro. Wow. 100,000 yeah. euro. So at the one zero zero dash zero zero zero. So there's there's one faction in in your government that is trying to get the blasphemy uh, reference removed from the constitution. No, he's trying to enforce. Well, no, 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 you said there has been people trying to. There okay. was uh, there was an attempted reformation. Oh, and sorry, referendum. And did they fail last year? They that failed. was trying to you know, take it out of the bill, basically, because it's ridiculous. And, 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 and did they fail? Uh, well, I don't think anything was done with it at the time. Okay. So, basically, well, right now, they're trying to enforce the law that they're going to be charged a fine not exceeding 100,000 euro, which is just uh, ridiculous. What, what, what are the odds, do you think, that this, that this is going to pass? Well, the Minister for Justice, Dermot O'Hearn, yeah. is a devout... Catholic, yeah. so it's very likely that at least if, they, if it doesn't go through with 100,000 euro, it's going to go through with something. So basically, this the guy, first I, oh, sorry. basically you've got a guy who on a regular basis blasphemes Protestants and Muslims just by being a Catholic, just by participating in his own... But what these people don't understand is that it's blasphemy for you to practice your own religion. You are blaspheming others if you say anything at all in public. Even if, you, you know, uh, even if you're just uh, praying. I, this, this stuff makes no sense to me. Yeah, well, basically you're trying to bring it in there so that basically any form of blasphemy is basically illegal. Well, it will be illegal if this does come in which means that if you are walking along in the street and say something blasphemous and somebody hears it, they can report you to the, like, the guards, basically. Have they, um, have they spelled out precisely what is blasphemy? Um, is there a list of, you can't say this, you can't say this, you can't say um, that? I've got one open here. I've got if one open here. Would you send it to me so I can say all of that <laughs> and people can, can broadcast it in Ireland? Yeah, yeah uh, it's already being broadcast in Ireland by Atheist Ireland, but the amount of people that go on to it, there's not very many, to be perfectly honest. We, we, uh, um, it's, of course, sad to hear that this is going on in Ireland. We get this kind of crap all the time in the U.S. <coughs> With um, you know various states, generally it's at the state level. But do you get a uh, uh, office being majors. charged 100,000 euro per offense? Uh, it, that would be roughly maybe a one one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, possibly. I wouldn't put it past them. You know, I there there have been so many cases. I'm not gonna, you know, be able to dredge up a specific offense. But uh, what I'm saying is, uh, yeah, they're trying to pull this stuff now, and they're trying to pull it because of the rise of unbelief across the world. Yeah. I'm sure it's the success of Dawkins and, and Hitchens and, uh, and over here, Dennett and Harris. Yeah. I'm sure the success of their books and the, the statistics that, that we're seeing now of people giving up religion, I'm sure that's got them terrified into a frenzy and they're trying to circle the wagons. So on, on one level, you can look at this sort of thing as desperation. Yeah, it pretty much is. Well, to me, and a lot of the people I've talked to, I've talked to 
like I've got Christian friends, I've talked to them, I've talked to atheist friends, I've got a couple yeah. of Muslim friends online, I've got basically friends of all faiths, and none of them think it's a good idea. Yeah. What, kind of weak, well, what kind of weak, pansy-ass God do you have that <laughs> if, if somebody speaks out against him, he, he needs them to be fine? I mean, he can't stand up for himself. And the money isn't even going to be going to him. And so just, just to clarify, does it, this still does have to, go, uh, has to go up for a vote, right? Yeah, but you see, a lot of the Irish politicians and the people on the committee yeah. are religious in some way. And they're trying. They're probably going to end up making it so that any form of blasphemy against any religion will huh. basically count. So it's basically all everyone else's rights are going to be held apart from people who do not believe in a god. Yeah. yeah. Or are skeptical. Yeah. Do you mind if well. I just go through a couple of things that would be um, blasphemy under this law? Sure. Um, the publication of basically any work from Richard Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the bits I have to say. Um, publication or saying this could be illegal in Ireland if the new blasphemy law is passed. This is just a quote from the God Delusion. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it. A pretty unjust, unforgiving control, or sorry, a, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, I can't say that, uh, genocidal, filicidal, pesticidal, megalomaniacal, uh, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. Yeah, yeah. Which, which, Dawkins, which Dawkins himself characterizes as an attempt at humor. Yeah, and it's, it's just unbelievable that they're just going to try and anything basically bad or even if you just say God is fiction as a joke that is going to be I don't need to say it as a joke uh, <laughs> by the way it would be would it be illegal for you to listen to the nonprofits uh, well that's actually the next thing on my list uh, videos satire movies documents publicate basically anything that you can read listen to or write that you blaspheme in it's going to be under this law. Jesus Christ the musical, Jesus Will Survive, will be illegal in Ireland. You couldn't put it up on YouTube, you couldn't watch it in your own home, well, you could watch it in your own home, you just have to be careful that no policeman come to your door. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how they, I mean, they have no authority over us making the show, so it's, yeah, no. do, does your list include the, just the production of such things, or well, no, watching if, such things. If you're in Ireland and you produce it, basically you're not going to be able to All produce. Right, so we're okay. It, full stop. <laughs> yeah, these are okay, but <laughs> n not if. Basically, okay. I've got a YouTube channel here in Ireland, but if this does actually yeah. pass, and I post up, well, I post quite a few of the atheist experience videos. So if this does pass, and they find out that I'm uploading the atheist experience videos and they somehow find out how to contact yeah. me. Yeah, that's me, basically. Well, uh, I, here's a potential piece of advice. Um, mm -hmm. This is what uh, generally happens here in the U.S. when we have similar uh, issues like over the uh, Ten Commandments monuments. Mm -hmm. When the Christians get, you know, argue that they have the right to put their religious um, beliefs up on public property, then uh, other organizations can claim the same right, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you get, and what happens is it's not atheists. Well, one of the most most uh, famous cases concerns this group of like pyramid worshippers that wanted to put one of their pyramids up on public land after it was de de deemed okay for the Christians to have their Ten Commandments monument, and. Um, my point is, as Matt was saying, any, all religions blaspheme one another regularly by their very existence. So one possible way out, assuming it does pass, is just, you know, 
stay low and wait for the fireworks to begin between the religionists. Start the fireworks. Every, oh. every religious television program that's produced, start complaining. They're, they're blaspheming, they're blaspheming, they're blaspheming. <laughs> right. The worst thing is that even if, say, maybe like a priest giving a sermon on a Sunday morning or any morning, any afternoon or full stop, if they even jokingly say, God damn, they're in violation. Yeah. Which is just, in my, yeah. like, it's just ridiculous, full stop. There's nothing else to say about it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's a, that's a possible course of action. Mm. Would you mind if I just gave out the name of a website that is basically going against this? It basically gives a rundown of the entire um, details of what's going on. Sure. Uh, well, it's very simple. It's just www.blasphemy.ie. And that just basically goes through the general discussion and comments about it. Um, Make sure you have your website hosted somewhere outside of Ireland. Oh, it's not actually my website. Oh, well, <laughs> strongly advise the people that run it to host it outside of Ireland. Uh, it's pretty much hosted by Catholics, Protestants, Mormons, <laughs> Islam, people from the Jedi Church, apparently, yeah. Judaists. Sci I'm trying to figure out as well, actually. Maybe you could put some more light in this if Scientology would come under the heading of blasphemy because it's they're deemed as a religion apparently in Ireland Scientology and there are Scientology not. centers. Oddly enough, Scientology might not. Now granted, it's, you know, they've been outlawed in a number of places, but um, on the surface they will claim that their religion is actually compatible with all other religions. Mm -hmm. and. And so, on the surface level, they, they may be the only ones who aren't blaspheming anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, of course, you know, once you've paid enough money, you, you may find out that there's actually uh, a, a, a claim or two that might be considered blasphemous. But off the top of my head, uh, just going by what the, what the actual religions claim, Scientology might be the only one that's safe. Maybe they're behind this. Maybe they're behind this blasphemy law. Wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't put them past, put it past them. Well, thanks a lot for calling, Paul, and uh, we'll uh, make another website and uh, let us know. That's cool. Thank I, you very much. I wish you luck, but you're Irish already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, can I just say one more thing? Sure. sure. Apparently, even saying the Irish saying "bigura," if this law goes through, you can't say it anymore. A lot of the Irish stereotypes are going to be null and void. Ah. Yep. So. Uh. But you're That's still going to make whiskey and stuff, right? <laughs> I'll have to go from making something stronger. Maybe punching. <laughs> All right, thanks, That's Paul. Cool. Later. We got, is it Greg in Tucson? Uh, yes, hi. Why is it pronounced Tucson when it looks like Tucson? Uh, you got me. Right. I'll have to research that. What do you got for us? Uh, well, I wanted to, I have a question about a, a Bible verse. Um, I'd, I'd first like to give you a little bit of background, if I can. Uh, I'll make it real brief. Okay. Uh, I was brought up in the Lutheran Church, uh, but it uh, my entire family is Christian, but it never took with me. I never, uh, you know, thinking back, I never considered myself a Christian. Uh, I quit going to church at a young age, and and throughout my teens and twenties, I was just say a non-believer. Uh, I never called myself an atheist or an agnostic or anything. Um, but then about, <clears throat> excuse me, about 20 years ago, I started believing in God. Um, that's another story. I won't get into the reasons why. Uh, but the reason that that's important, um, I, again, I didn't think of myself as a Christian. I, I, I've always had a problem with organized religion, and I saw the holes in the Bible, uh, even though I didn't didn't really know that much about the Bible, just what I'd heard in church when I was younger and, and yeah. so forth. Uh, so about five years ago, I started studying the Bible, and I tried to do it with an open mind, uh, knowing that um, I would tend to be trying to debunk it. Uh, so I tried not to do that, in other words. 
And this is the passage that that just stopped me in my tracks. It's um, Exodus 21, verses uh, 20 and 21. If a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod, and he dies at his hand, he shall be punished. If, however, he survives a day or two, no vengeance shall be taken, for he is his property. Yep. And now, this, yep. uh, before I get to my question, this, this, this just, like I said, it stopped me in my tracks. At first, was my very first real realization that God is saying right here that it is okay to have slaves. Oh, I mean, it says a lot more than that. It, yeah, it does. But that was the first thing I thought. It, you know, I'd heard them talk about slaves in the Bible, but here God is condoning, actually condoning slavery and saying it's okay to, for, you know, a human being that he supposedly created to be owned by another human being. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the real obvious one is... God has seems to think that, you know, like if I hit somebody over the head with a blunt object and they die right away or they die next week, you know, I'm responsible for that person's death, right? Yep. I mean, everybody knows that. Today. Everybody except for the guy who wrote that verse. Right, exactly. Um, Which luckily wasn't a God. Yeah. Well, that's... Because we would be we would be really screwed if there were in fact a God and He wrote that. Yeah, that would be pretty horrifying. Exactly. You know what's weird? I'm going to sidetrack myself a little bit. I, in my being, I'm usually not naive, but I naively thought when I read this that oh my God, even any Christian who reads these words would have to admit that God couldn't possibly have written these words. And I called, uh, like, a, I have a, one friend who's totally a, a fundamentalist, uh, George Bush-loving Christian. <laughs> and amazingly, we get along very well on everything else. And I read this to him, and he would not believe the way he rationalized. Oh, well, yes, I would. Yeah. Well, I've been doing this show for a long time. I've had this particular passage rationalized at least five times in the past month by people it's, in email. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, What's funny then, is that uh, most, of, most of what they end up doing when they rationalize, all you have to do is go grab another verse to show that, that they're wrong. Yeah. He said things that, you, I'm sure you've heard this a dozen times, he said, well, first, they treated slaves very differently in those days. Yes, they beat them with rods. Yeah, until they died. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah. I, I, it, it's the dumbest thing in the world. I, you're, you're experiencing exactly what I've experienced. I point out a passage that says you can beat your slaves as long as they don't die within a day or two. And by the way, uh, why a day or two? Can we be a little bit more specific? I mean, if you're going to put a timeline on it, right. if they don't die after a day, but they die on the second day, can you just say, well, one a day? Yeah. He can suffer, you know, severe brain injuries. He can lose an eye or a limb. Well, except you'd have right. to lose an eye, too. What? You'd have to lose an eye, too. If it's a slave? Oh, yeah. Okay. The, the thing is, so, so basically what it encourages is beating somebody to death in a way that takes a while yeah. that doesn't do damage that would have, you'd have to be done to you. But yeah, that's the first thing is, oh, no, no, you guys, you are so naive. You, you've bought into this myth. You simply don't understand that slavery was so much different back then. You have this, I, this concept of slavery from, you know, the nasty things that happened in the South and exactly. you know, from watching Roots and everything. No, you moronic asshole. <laughs> not only does the book talk about hitting them with a rod and letting them, and they, you're not in trouble if, they t- if it takes them more than two days to die. The point here, you thick dimwit, is that it advocates owning another person as property. Right. That's wrong. I don't care if you treat them like a freaking angel, like they're the best thing that's ever happened to you. They're not property. To say that you get to own another person and pass them down to, to your children as property is simply freaking wrong done. That's exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. It's but in only, fact, like it does goats. say go ahead and beat them. Like how many goats and how many slaves do you it, have? It's also very yeah. common for Christians to try to get out of this by pulling the, oh, it's the Old Testament trick, mm. right? God could only really motivate. He was, he was trying to make slavery less bad by putting in that rule. Because, but that's really as far as he could go back then. Yeah, find the part in the New Testament where it explicitly says 
slavery is wrong. There's no such thing as owning another human being. Try to find it. It doesn't exist. Hmm. Well, do they, do they, they uh, say talk about slavery in the New Testament? Monsters. Anyway, what's that? Do they talk about slavery in the New Testament? Yeah, it says servants obey your masters. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's one bit they like to bring up, uh, and I'm sure Matt will know chapter and verse. I'm I not the Bible expert. Um, about the some slave that is personally known to the writer of the of that New Testament book and he's asking for that guy to be set free but it's because it, he's because he's a you know a good Christian man or something mm -hmm. but that's, that that is not an anti-slavery statement it's a hey let my personal friend off the hook because he's one of us statement huh. that's it yeah well, uh, the other thing that I realized after reading this that I don't know if you guys have already talked about this or, or have any thoughts about it, I, and that will bring me to my question. Um, I thought, well, you know, the Jews, uh, they had just been, this, this, I believe this passage is when God is giving the Jews the laws right after the Ten Commandments, right? Yeah. Um, and God had allegedly, freed them as slaves in Egypt, right? Yeah. So my question is, how long had they been free at this point? How long since they'd been freed from slavery to this moment in the Bible? Uh, I, I couldn't say off the top of my head. I, if, I, if I'm remembering right, I mean, this is essentially not an entire generation that's even passed at this point. But right. I, I might be wrong. It could have been several generations, depending on the verse. Well, that I find very odd, too, that you know, having just been freed as slaves, they're already talking about owning their own slaves. Well, well I mean, it, it, the, the God chooses the Jews to free, right? Right. It, he doesn't say universally across the world, all slaves are now free. He chooses right. some guys. So having been chose, they're the free ones. There's no statement there that slavery is is inherently evil just oh you guys get to not be slaves anymore and, right. and, and the other they, they, they get very specific in the sense that there are specific rules applied to the Jews on who they can enslave for example anybody who's not a Jew that's the first rule and right. then there's the second rule that says oh and by the way you can enslave your fellow Jews but you have to let them go in the seventh year <laughs> and then as if that wasn't funny enough right after that, there's a little verse that says, but if you give him a wife when his seven years are up and he's ready to go, his wife stays with you. And then if he comes to you and says, oh, I love my wife and I love my master and I don't want to leave, then you get to drive a spike through his ear and he's now your property forever. So oh, after true. saying you can enslave Jews but not forever, it then gives you the loophole that allows you to enslave your fellow Jews forever. <laughs> Brilliant. I remember reading that now. Yeah. yeah. But the, the odd thing to me is that having... The point I was trying to make is having been slaves themselves, yeah. you would think they would be more opposed to slavery. It just goes to show it was not understood to be an inherently evil institution. It was just understood to be a condition they didn't want to be in. Right. That's just... It's, the thing is, is that no matter how... I mean, slavery isn't um, the equivalent of perpetual torture. Um, it's a matter, even in the South, and you watch whatever else, and, and yes, we're talking about beating people. That's why my huge objection is this idea of owning this property. It's absolutely stupid of a slave owner to continually beat and torture his slaves, because guess what? They're not going to be very productive. You're going to yeah. have injured people rather than actual workers. So by and large, um, slavery can be beneficial to the slaves as well. I mean, you're in. it's not... It, it, I'm, not, I'm not trying to play this up as a plus, but you're in a situation where you have uh, regular work and food and everything else and you're taken care of and you're part of a system and you're being productive. The problem here is not that everything about everything that happens within this is necessarily evil. It's that you are not free. You are owned. Your decisions are not your own. You are property. And the, the reason that it wasn't surprise, it wasn't uh, that it shouldn't surprise anybody that they wanted to have slaves as well is because if you have, have owning slaves, fantastic for the slave owner. <laughs> it's yeah, it's like the saying. best things before sliced bread. <laughs> I see what you're saying. 
Well, anything else, Greg? Um, that's basically it. I, I want to thank Matt personally. Um, I now am an atheist, and I have you to thank for that. Uh, I saw, I ran across one of your little short clips on YouTube quite by accident, and uh, basically what you were saying about how you took a look at your own, you had to take a good, hard look at your own beliefs and why you believed them. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what started me looking at my own beliefs and then doing some research and and uh, it's very I don't know I find it very uh, freeing me too and I'm very happy for you Greg and thank you very much for the compliment but you did it on your own just like I did just we gotta get information out that's the yeah. big thing yeah, give yeah. people well, resources so that they can do the work themselves right exactly and for those Christians watching, when we say freeing, we mean, you know, it frees our minds to be able to think clearly about stuff. It's not carte blanche to go out and, you know, commit a bunch of depravity, which is what you think we're all in it for. Which is, oddly enough, uh, something we were free to do beforehand. You just ask forgiveness. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't hit a single person over the head with a rod since I became an atheist. <laughs> so you're not going to the right bars. Yeah, I don't believe in the guy that gives you permission. Thanks a lot, Greg. I okay, thank you. Bye. Um, uh, we're down to less than four minutes. And less I have than this, two minutes. I have this thing that do I want to do since do he didn't call. Uh, last week, um, uh, Russell Glasser and Matt Wagner were on, and in the last few minutes of their show, they had a caller, um, uh, Damien from Chicago, who said he was going to come ba call back and hasn't, uh, but I want to quickly respond to something he said. He said to uh, to Russell and Matt, God loves you both. I don't know that doesn't uh, that doesn't mean much to you. And uh, Russell replied, well, we know it means something to you, so thank you. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that had he called us today, he'd have been willing to say those same words, that his God loves us both, uh, even though it doesn't mean much to us, to me and Matt. But it's, it's possible. What? Martin was here, not me. Yes, but if he had called now, it would be me and Matt. Ah. Uh, I'm on the same page. And I'm not, I'm not Russell. So, uh... Now, the caller was aware he was talking to atheists who don't believe in his God because he said he realized the phrase wouldn't mean anything. you got 30 seconds. So he was not... Oh, God, I'm never going to get through this. I'll do it on my next appearance. Okay. There's no reason. I can't get it, I can't get it out in 30 seconds. Anyway, uh, Damien, if you're out there, um, boy, I'm sad you didn't call during the show. And uh, please do watch for me being on again. Um, they post the schedule on the... Um, Atheist Experience website, and I'd, I'd love to ask you some questions about what you mean by that. We're out of time. Thanks, everybody who called in. Thanks to the guys in the booth. There's the, the list of them. We're going to Thread Gills, which I didn't announce enough during the show. We'll be down there in less than a half an hour. Any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to join us. We'll be back here again next week for at least one or two more weeks before the studio shuts down, but stay tuned to the website for information on how to watch over the summer. See you next week. Ken. What's up? You called back, and you have a question, right? Yeah, I just want to ask you a real quick question. Okay. It was quick as I possibly can. Um, I remember a long, you know, a bunch okay, of Okay, now stop, calls. stop. Hold on, hold on. Hang on, just, hang on, Ken, I, just give me a second here, because you had a question, and you said you're going to get to it as quick as you can. I have the question posted here that says, why should the laws of nature apply to God? Is that the question? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Then the quickest way to get to it is to ask it, right? Well, I just wanted you to, to understand the whole full scope of it. But okay, go ahead. What do you, what, the, the question, question is, why should laws of nature apply to God? I don't know. What God? Who's God? What is this God? What do you mean? Well, how, how do you know the laws of nature should do apply to God? Because the reason why is that you guys object. This I can't hear. Excuse Can me. Have some volume, this please? objection that you guys make. What? This this objection that you guys made yeah. in, in the past, yeah. you said that it, it doesn't, you know, if it applies, okay, here's my thing, is if it created the universe and everything in it, yep. okay, yep. In, in, in the laws and everything, why would that creator of those laws 
that I created them out of existence apply to the very thing that created it. It doesn't make sense. I, I never said that this is the case. No, well, well and I know you never said that, but I'm, I'm just answering your objection. You, guys but, you, all never answered, you never answered Matt Wagner's uh, uh, que uh, question. Martin. Ma because he said Martin I had Wagner's question. question. Sorry, Martin Wagner's question. You never answered his question, which was, how can a being that exists outside of time do stuff? And he explained to you, creation is a causal act. It ha has to happen in time. Otherwise, I can ask you, when did the God create the universe? And you can't answer it. Because well, it's not out of time. Yeah, but the God is not a, a thinking mind. His knowledge just is. God's not a thinking mind? Of course not. Your God, is, is, your God has, no, has no mind. And th that does not... Well, that, uh, that's bizarre, but it's completely a non sequitur. When, when did your God create the universe? Well, according to the, I think the the, uh, the universe, as far as how long it's, it's been around, yeah. I think 13.7 billion years. So he's in time. No. He can do a thing in right. time. How that is it that he can do a thing in time if he's not in time? No. What's wrong not, with you? No, how can I explain? Sure, if it's not, it. I, yeah, not, you've been trying, and apparently you can't. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're getting ahead of me, and you're putting words in my mouth. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're responding no, to no, the no, words no, that come no, out of no, your no. mouth. You need to take responsibility for them. The, can I explain? I doubt it, but try. Oh. He's not physical, guys. So what? Or, or so so what? Okay, creation happens at a time. That is when a creation happens. If it doesn't happen at a time, then it's not a creation. If it's not, if, if it's not bound by the create. Okay, okay. I just explained that it's not bound no, by the no, law. No, you just explain anything. You never explained you any of that. call you have ever made, you have not begun to explain anything. You make assertions. And then when challenged on them, you make excuses. <sighs> yeah, Ken, you're fucking up the wrong tree, Ken. Define your, your God. Your argument doesn't work. Define your God. A timeless, unchanging... You know, this is no point. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna I, unchanging, so he doesn't make any decisions. So he also doesn't create because he never decides to create. Yeah, because to decide to create means making it to be changing what you think you're gonna do. God. Holy crap! <laughs> I'm annoyed I didn't get to the Damien. Hey, Miguel. Hey. Thanks for helping. The show's no, over, <laughs> but you yeah, know. We'd love to have had you on, man, but. There was no time. <laughs> no, it's cool. I understand. Um, I've been talking to uh, Matt through email about um, about doing an intro for you guys' show. But uh, I had an unrelated topic question or addition to what you mentioned at the beginning of the show, Jeff. Yeah. Um, you said something about um, about how in the military, or you had mentioned um, church in the military. Yeah. And how and how uh, maybe maybe they didn't get all those things that you know you had at the beginning of the show. Maybe it didn't make it down to them. Well, <laughs> I just wanted to say I was in the army for seven years. Um, I did four deployments. I went to Iraq, Afghanistan. Actually, Iraq twice. Afghanistan and Kosovo. Um, Stand up, and yeah, yet, proselytizing is is very commonplace. I mean, they they often have like mandatory church services. Yeah. Um, they have unit functions that are run by the chaplain, so you have to be there, and that's an opportunity for them to get on their soapbox. But I, I would say the the craziest thing is that before every combat mission or logistical mission um, where soldiers might be put in harm's way, there's a chaplain there before they go out, yeah. and they basically give a sermon about how what we're doing is right and how we have the backing of God and blah, 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 blah. So sure. yeah, I just wanted to give you guys that piece of information and see what you thought about it. As long as it's not required for everybody to attend, I can't <laughs> possibly object to it. I, I mean, well, it, on, on legal grounds, I can object to it on, on ethical and intellectual grounds all day long. It's stupid. Well, yeah. 
But if yeah, they it, are it, requiring everybody to attend, then I'd complain. Right. It's the it's the mission briefing. Whereas if you're not there, you're um, you miss movement and there's uh, punitive action. But yeah, so that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the army the army gets it. I mean, people in the military, I would say, uh, it's pretty much free reign for these guys. Um, all these chaplains and uh, church services, uh, because because of the fact that I mean, you were, you said you were in the um, in the military, right, Matt? Yep, Navy, eight years. Yeah, so they they pretty much have you where they want you. I mean, you can't really go anywhere. Oh yeah. And they can they can uh, they can pretty much apply the pressure and make sure that you're there. So. Yep. Well, I'm, I got it. We're, we're in the after show stuff, and I got at least one more person to get to before we head out to dinner. But thanks for calling, Miguel. Yeah, thanks for your call, man. Right, thanks for your service. Right, this one's just got question marks. Hello. Hi, Matt. Oh, God. You again. <laughs> well, the question's been answered. Hi, Jeff. Right. Listen, I was knocking around the web, surprise, and I came across uh, some more information on that Irish blasphemy bill, if you'd like it. Okay. Real quick, this is from the irishtimes.com from the print edition of the Irish Times newspaper, and I quote, Blasphemous matter is defined as matter that is grossly abusive or insulting in relation to matters held sacred by any religion, thereby causing outrage among a substantial number of the adherents of that religion, semicolon. And he or she intends, by the publication of the matter concerned, to cause such outrage. Oh, Period, there's no such quote. thing. So that's, that's what's in the text of that law. Okay, then there's no such thing. I can't imagine how that could ever cause any kind of problems for a judge, can you? <laughs> I mean, it's so, it's so crystal clear, it's exemplary lawmaking. Well, it, I, they have it, to prove that I intended to cause the kind of outrageous response that I got. And in any case, it shouldn't be there in the first place. Yeah, I know, it's, it's, it's just, astonishing, it's and I thought British libel law was bad. This is, this is incredible. It, it's, it's just an opportunity for abuse and shouldn't be there in the first place if you care about free speech. What I'd also like to know, just as an aside, the Irish Republic is a member of the European community, and I'm pretty sure that they have a subsidiarity clause for their laws. I'm pretty sure that the European community cannot possibly accommodate this under their existing constitutional framework. Well, so how are they going to enforce it? The, the UN was trying to do this shit not long ago and, and try to make it a binding resolution, so it was in part the laws of the independent nations that would have made it toothless in the first place, so I, yeah, I, you may be right there. Okay, anyway, I thought that's, anyway, that's the text of this ridiculous thing, in case anyone's curious. Yeah, okay, thanks. I'll, I'll catch you online later, George. All right, catch you guys later. All right. I don't know who else is on hold, but we're going to eat. See you next week.